Hi guys, uh, welcome to Salt and Light. Hey, I just thought I'd do a quick um, video uh, today. Uh, I got uh, a delivery yesterday of some stuff um, that I ordered uh, a couple of months ago and I thought it may be a good opportunity just to show uh, what I've got. The company that I bought the kit from uh, recommended as for engine controls uh, a company called Glen Denning. Now, I've reached out to them probably three or four times over the last three years um, and have not been able to get a response from them at all. Uh, same with uh, ZF uh, controls. And so I was getting quite frustrated with, um, yeah, just companies not getting back to me. Uh, and so it was a quite a surprise when I went to the Yokohama uh, boat show uh, earlier this year and there was a uh, Japanese uh, manufacturer of uh, electronic engine controls. Now where my helm is and where my engines are it's impossible for me to run uh, mechanical push-pull cables um, there so I, I have to run an electronic system uh, and so that's what's arrived. So uh, let's have a look. I, I have not opened them yet, so this, you'll be seeing them uh, as I see them. So uh, let's uh, open them up and see what we've got. All right. Alright, so what we've got here are all the cables. Uh, all the control cables. Uh, it comes with the option of, a, of an idle switch, so you can uh, run the engine, you can adjust the idle, um, <clears throat> you can adjust the idle up and down it uh, as you need it. Not sure whether I will use this, but it came anyway. Um, and just some more control cables. Yeah. So that's all of those. Let's pull the cables back in the box. All right. Sure, what's in here? Packaging. <laughs> so, circuit breakers, circuit breakers. I'm guessing these are going to be the, possibly the actuators. plug into the um, into the controller into the controls uh, power and then signals out to the actuators Oh, 
two control units. Control units. Mm. Oh, okay, this is the um, this is the cable for um, connecting a PC uh, to um, to be able to uh, program the control units. I think these, these are going to be the actuator choices. This is uh, well, they're quite a uh, quite bigger than I thought they're going to be. So they've got uh, they've got manual operation um, uh, in case there's a you know, can't control them electrically, you can uh, uh, operate them manually, which just means going down into the uh, uh, so it's uh, clicking it over. Uh, yeah, so you can operate these manually. So there are uh, that's a that's a really uh, beefy box. I like it. Main, the main deal. Well, as I was editing this um, this video, I just realised like, I've done a shocking job uh, showing you what the actual components um, look like and how they go together. So I've just got the parts out and uh, done a, a bit of a general connection and uh, I'll give you a look and see what it looks like. All right, so starting with the control unit. Um, this is a really nice, like it, it looks nice, feels really nice, very solid. And of course it's got the um, sink uh, function which allows you to sync uh, both engines together uh, at the same rev and then um, just use one handle to control both engines. So out of that it will come, um, come to the control unit. Uh, now on the control unit we have um, a lead, oh yeah, uh, this lead here for uh, plugging into your PC. Uh, to be able to program it. Uh, we also have a lead uh, that will then go to the um, remote control uh, and then the main uh, connection uh, which will then go to the actuator. So all of those cables we saw before will be the extension of all of those to make that happen. So this one is the, um, the actuator. Uh, so we have the throttle 
and the shift control. So these uh, covers come off and the cable comes through here, connects onto here, and then um, we'll operate the uh, gearbox and the throttle control. And as I said, we have um, the option of being able to um, go into manual mode uh, if for some reason the electronic side fails. The remote control is a really nice piece of kit. Um, it's really solid, it feels really nice. I just, just the, the actions um, just feels really good. have to look at this there's a port there's a button here for port and starboard um, off to read up on that and find out what that does um, so that's that's essentially the electronic system uh, for the engine controls so yeah really nice uh, well made you know the, everything's really solid uh, and just really nice um, piece of kit I thought I might just give uh, you a quick run around of where everything is at at the moment. Uh, so, been doing a little bit of work on the, um, the tender. Uh, so I've got uh, some support stringers on the side, got them glued on uh, yesterday. Um, and just starting to, a little bit of shaping, a little bit of support for the front here. Just a uh, bit of a test fit on the side. got the uh, rear supports for the um, uh, the rear seats to go in uh, just waiting for uh, a couple of fittings for bung fittings for the uh, back here uh, before I close it all up I want to get those uh, fitted in when I bought the kit I ordered the uh, ceiling uh, sheets um, with um, some grooves machined into it um, and I wasn't sure whether I was going to use it or not um, or you turn the sheet over and use the flat side of it uh, so we've just quickly threw some white paint this is just white primer uh, onto it just to have a look and we did actually put it up uh, I'll insert some photos here and you can have a look um, but I'll, the thing I come up against um, was that I don't think it's the best idea to have the grooves uh, in the cockpit area um, uh, and so I think it might look a bit funny having the grooves in the salon area and then a flat section out in the cockpit area. Uh, the consensus amongst all the guys uh, was we just use the flat sheets. Um, but I'll, I'll throw some photos in, let you have a look for yourself, see what you think. The gap between um, these two beams is just over 1400. Um, and of course the sheets are 1200. Um, now, I was thinking of different ways to be able to manage that. I uh, could cut them and join them down the middle. Um, uh, then just adds an extra joint into the into the whole mix. Uh, or I thought I could put uh, a strip down the side of the beam uh, on each side uh, that would make the gap um, the right width to suit the sheet. Uh, and the idea would that I could run some uh, maybe some LED lighting. Uh, in between and so I have um, gone and cut and fitted 
uh, all of those side pieces. Uh, so they're all uh, had a couple of coats of resin uh, ready to be um, uh, glued up, uh, possibly even painted before we put them up, but we'll see how we go. You may have noticed that um, I, in the earlier video, that um, I've got a bandage wrapped around my leg. I uh, had another little little mishap on the, uh, um, as I was um, doing, working up here. So I needed to I needed to um, build up this this curve here, um, and the only way I could do it was uh, with several strips of uh, plywood and some timber, and uh, and to bend them around and glue them all in place. Uh, and of course, that was you know quite a um, uh, a challenge uh, by myself, and uh, and in the process of. I've actually, yeah, when I've stepped down, I've missed and... On the design, uh, Dudley had uh, the rain catcher uh, part it was just a uh, square piece of timber uh, which curved around. And I didn't really like the look of that. It just looked like it was something that was added on. So I wanted to continue the angle up. Uh, and in order to do that, uh, I used uh, strips of plywood on the inside and then on the outside a uh, thicker piece of uh, timber or in a couple of places, uh, a couple of strips of timber. Uh, that way I was able to shape the, um, the timber to be the same angle as the roof edge. All right, pick it up from where we left off before the uh, camera overheated and shut itself off. All right, so we've got the um, plate for the mask base uh, on here. All right, and I've also got the uh, self-tacking, not the track, but a, uh, just a, a piece for the self-tacking jib track to sit on. So that'll give me something to line up to. Also, main purpose of it was just to give the car a little bit of clearance. Yeah, so if I was to just screw the track straight to the deck, uh, the car would run, it would clear the deck, but it'd be very close. So anything that, you know, that you know, dirt and stuff that may accumulate on there would get caught for sure. Um, so this is just a, uh, uh, about three millimeters uh, just to give it a bit of clearance um, yeah and also give me something to aim for when it comes time for um, putting the track on all right well that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed it and we'll catch you in the next one